Lucky and Foster are both in their respective beds. The son can read one more chapter, and then you can deliver your good night kiss. Well, that will be a pleasure. And if I'm stealth dad, maybe I can catch the mutt sneaking from his bed into Lucky's. You know, I've got to train that dog to sleep in the bed that I made for him. Sweetheart, the only way to train that beast is with a whip and a chair. It's a cute bed, though. Real cute. More than just cute, it's our future, and I need him to protect it. You know the bundle of money you gave me along with the fake IDs? I have sewn it into the lining of Foster's mattress. <laughs> You're so good with a needle. <laughs> but wait, can we trust the dog not to take the money and run? Well, I hear he's in cahoots with a cute little French poodle. Might as well face it, he's addicted to love. <laughs> mm. Mm. Me too, me too. Mm. Did Lucky have a good time at Mary Mays? Oh, yeah. He had a great time. As a matter of fact, your son has asked for his own copy of Leaves of Grass. Walt Whitman. The poet? Yes. This from a kid who cut his teeth on X-ray men meet the leech people. Has he got a fever? <laughs> no. Mary May told him about her family history. And apparently that made quite an impression on him. Good. Mm. Good, it's healthy for him to learn how other people live. Especially from her and not from some textbook. Yeah, she is great with him. Then again, she's great with everybody. What did you find? Well, nothing yet. I'm just getting started. Okay, then. What are we looking for? Well, I don't know for sure. But somewhere in these records is a clue as to how Cusack keeps in touch with Frank since he escaped. You know I love a mystery. <laughs> we'll dive in. Okay. I don't get it. Look, I mean, all we have here is, is a list of phone numbers that span the country and beyond, and any one of these could be Frank's number. Except this one. What? 415. That's the Bay Area. San Francisco? Yeah. Oh, but the problem is, see, this number is used as many times before the escape date as after. What we're looking for is a number that activates after Frank's escape. Like this one. What? An 800 number. Established at the beginning of the month and not used until the day after his escape when he must have uh, contacted Cusack. You know, mm -hmm. that's how they keep track of each other. And the great thing is that an 800 number will show who called you as well as who you called. Mm. What's the problem? They must have a friend at the phone company. This information's been blocked. I don't get it. They're making sure no one can track their communications. Let me see this thing here. Honey. This is so simple, it's almost scary. Hmm? It's simple. What do you mean? No, 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 are you nuts? <laughs> Why not? I mean, all we have to do is dial Frank's number, have a little chat with him, and deliver our deal ourselves. No, no, baby, look, if they're smart enough to use the, 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 the information from the phone company and get all this block, they're also smart enough to have some kind of a scrambler on the phone. I hate it when you get technical. Well, what, what, does this mean? what that means is that they can talk to each other, but if we try to call them, we're going to get nothing but static and garble. And they'll know that somebody unauthorized has made the call, because if he's smart enough to block all this information, which he is, he's also smart enough to have a caller ID. That would mean he could trace it to us. Is that really so bad? Well, yeah, hon, because then they're going to say, how did they get the number? They must have broken into Cusack's office. If they got the number, what else did they get? We better go chase them down and find out, and that's certainly not the healthiest situation. I spoke to Jennifer, and sure enough, the Spencer showed up in Atlantic City, and surprise, surprise, they had a very pleasant little visit. She didn't have the sense. The poor girl is such an innocent. She claims Spencer just wanted to talk about old times. Of, of course. Why would Jennifer think otherwise? So Luke's probably telling the truth. He has something heavy on Jennifer. She can't imagine how he 
got the information without her knowing it. What about Billy? What does he know? What he always knows, Bupkus. But I'm not about to give credence to anything my idiot son-in-law has to say. If Luke claims he's got documentation, then we better believe that he's got documentation. And why would he lie? It's too dangerous. What do you want me to do? Yeah, we've got to approach this like an ordinary business negotiation. Spencer's got something we want. We've got to offer him something of equal value for it. His freedom. That's what he's asking. Bill, Bill, use your head. If we give Spencer what he wants, he'll define the rules. No, no. We've got to give him something of our choosing. Do we have anything he wants? Not in our hands. Not yet. And I promise you what I'm thinking about will give us all the leverage we need. What do you want us to do? Spencer thinks he can use my daughter for leverage. I need equal clout. The kid. Bigger. What? You grab Laura Spencer and hold her, and then Luke and I can deal. So now that we know how Frank communicates with Kuzak, all we have to do is figure out from where? Mm-hmm. Well, we can do that, right? Sure we can. We just have to find where the record of that phone number is. Somewhere deep in the bowels of the phone company is a computer that knows where Frank Smith is hiding. Mm just have to use some ingenuity. Something you have in huge amounts, my darling. And you, my darling, have impeccable taste. No objectivity where I'm concerned. Admit it, wife. Admit it. Admit it. Admit it. Admit it. <laughs> <laughs>